Hi there, I'm Wendy and this video is the second in my tutorials for crochet projects for absolute beginners. So in this video I'm going to show you how to make a piece of bunting just like this and I'm going to show you step by step how to make the foundation chain and how to make the UK treble stitch, slip stitch and chain stitch so that you can complete your bunting. Um, this bunting also looks lovely if you embellish it with the flower from the first video in this series and I'm going to put a link above here now so that you can go directly to that and I'll also put that in the description notes below. So I'm going to take you as I said step by step all the way through but I'm also going to add the um, printed pattern which is a free PDF download in the description box below for you so that once you've got used to making it you can just refer straight to that and also this bunting is great if you are an experienced crocheter and you need to make a load of really quick bunting because it's very fast to make once you get going so we're going to take a look at what we need to make this and then i'll bring the overhead camera in and we'll make a start so to make the bunting you're going to need some acrylic double knitting yarn so I've got some oddments here that I used. Um, I tend to use Starcraft Special DK just because it's my go-to yarn for crochet. I'm not sponsored by them but it's just what I've always used. Um, and then you're going to need a darning needle for sewing in your ends afterwards and a pair of scissors for snipping your ends and I also used a metre of ribbon for five pieces of bunting so that just gives you an idea and the ribbon that I used to thread through my bunting was one centimetre wide. So now I'll bring the overhead camera in and we'll make a start. This is the right-handed video so if you're left-handed I'm going to put a link in above here now and in the description box below to send you to the left-handed video. To make a start on our bunting, we want to make a slip knot and 25 chain. So to make the slip knot, I've got the yarn laying across my fingers with the end of the yarn, which is called the tail end, going along the outside edge of my little finger. I'm then holding that yarn in place with my thumb and I'm going to wrap it around my first two fingers, cross the yarn over and hold it in place with my thumb again. Then I'm going to wrap it around again a second time, lower down, cross the yarn over and hold it in place. So I now have two loops that have gone around my fingers. I've got the first loop I made is the upper loop and the second loop I made is the lower loop. Then I'm going to take my hook and pop it underneath the top loop, grab the lower loop and pull that through and gradually take it off my fingers. And as I take it off my fingers, I want to hold these two ends of the yarn and just gently pull. And that will give me the flexible loop, which is a slip knot. Now, if you need some more help making a slip knot and a chain, I'm going to put a link in above here now and in the description box below that will direct you to my video that gives you how to make a slip knot and chain in more detail. So from here, we're going to make 25 chain. So to make the chain, I've got my slip knot here on my crochet hook and I want it just sitting on the shoulder here nice and comfortably. I don't want it tightly down in the neck. And I'm going to pop my forefinger on that just to give it some support. And I've got my hook looking at me as if it was a toothbrush and I was going to clean my teeth. And then I'm holding the yarn in the opposite hand, just gently in my fingers. And sometimes I'll want to let go with my thumb and forefinger so that I can hold the bottom of the stitch underneath the hook. But for now, we're going to take our yarn up the back of the hook, over the top and down the front. Then let go with that thumb and forefinger. And I'm going to hold the stitch now that's on the hook underneath. Okay, and I can let go with my forefinger. So now I'm going to catch that yarn in the hook, turn it downwards and then scoop it back through that stitch and I've made one chain. So I'm going to put my forefinger back on the hook. I can let go of the stitch underneath the hook because the stitch is supported. Take the yarn up the back, 
over the top and down the front. Then with the hand that's holding the yarn, let go with the forefinger and the thumb and grab that stitch underneath the hook. Turn that hook back downwards, catching the yarn and scooping it back through. And I've made two chains. Pop my forefinger back on the stitch that's on the hook. Let go of the chain underneath the hook. Take the yarn up the back, over the top, down the front. Grab the chain underneath the hook with that thumb and forefinger. And then I can turn my hook down and scoop it through. And I've made three chain. Now that movement is called a yarn over in crochet and it's a fundamental movement and used in every stitch. But I'm now going to show you how to speed up making the yarn over movement by feeding the yarn through the fingers on the opposite hand. So the way that I do mine is I have the yarn laying across my hand and then I wrap the yarn around my pinky all the way around and back out to the front of my hand. And then I just, it's almost like doing a running stitch. I trail the yarn through my fingers and have the yarn coming across my forefinger here. And I can use this to create some tension between the stitch on the hook and the yarn. So I've got a little bit of tautness. So now, instead of taking that yarn physically up the back and over the top, I can take my hook in front of the yarn and dip it underneath and it creates that same movement. And this will help you develop a smoother motion making your stitch, but this takes a little bit of time to get used to. So don't worry if you want to stick to the previous method, but I'm just going to show you now making the chain with the yarn over. So I'm taking my hook in front and underneath the yarn and up the other side and I've made that yarn over. And now I can hold the chain underneath the hook, turn my hook downwards and scoop it back through. And I've got four chain. So again, I'm going to take my hook in front of the yarn and underneath, and I've made the yarn over, hold the chain underneath the hook, turn my hook down and scoop through. So I'm going to do this a couple more times. I have my forefinger on top of the stitch on the hook. I'm going to take my hook now in front of the yarn, underneath and up. Hold the chain near the bottom of the hook and then turn my hook downwards and scoop through. Now, when you're counting your chain, you're not going to count this little knot here. That's the slip knot that you made at the very beginning. And you're not counting the stitch that's on your hook you're counting these V's that you're making. And we want to have 25 V's all in all. So I'm going to continue now till I've got 25 chains on my crochet hook. So I now have 25 chains on my crochet hook and I'm going to be working my first row into this foundation chain. And when I do this, I'm going to be working into one side of these Vs. So I'm just going to show you on any of the chains here. I'm going to just be putting my hook from front to back through one of those Vs like this. But I'm just going to show you a little tip. If you're a new crocheter, um, to make sure that you're crocheting into the correct chain and it will save you a lot of time um, on this first row. So I've taken my chain off of my crochet hook and in this first row I'm going to be working 11 trebles and it's going to be one treble in every other chain. 
So to make this easier, I've cut 11 little strands of yarn that I'm just going to hook through and use them as markers. And it will just save a lot of time and it will make you be able to see exactly where you need to make the right stitch. So I'm going to start from the end where I made my slip knot and I'm going to put my hook through from front to back through one side of the stitch and I'm just going to get one of these little markers, pop it in my hook and hook it through. Don't need to tie it, I just want it there because I'm going to take it straight out when I make the stitch. Then I'm going to miss the next chain and I'm going to put my marker in the next one. So just pop my hook through from front to back, pop a little strand of yarn into that hook and pull it through. And you start to make a rather wild sort of looking caterpillar type thing. Um, so miss the next chain and then pop that hook through from front to back again. Pop the yarn in the hook and pull the hook back through to the front. And again, just pull one strand through. Okay, take my next one, miss the next chain, put the hook from front to back through the chain, pop your little different colour yarn in and pull it through. And I'll continue that all the way along until I've got these 11 little markers in my chain. So I now have 25 chain and I've popped a marker in the first chain I made after the slip knot, missed a chain space and repeated this all the way along till I have 11 markers in my chain. So now I'm going to pop my chain back on my hook. So I have my V's looking at me, that's the front of my chain and I pop the hook through from front to back. And I want to have four chain underneath my hook from the last marker. So that's one, two, three, four, and that's it. We're ready to go. So we're going to be working into the chain where the first marker is, and we're going to be making one treble, one chain all the way along. So to make our treble stitch, I bring the yarn up the back, over the top and down the front and to the back of my work. That's the important part that the yarn is at the back of the work. Then I can take my hook through from front to back where that marker is, pull the marker out, we've used it now, and then I bring the yarn over, so it's up the back, over the top and down the front and to the back of my work again. And then I draw that hook back through to the front, bringing the yarn with me. And I've got three stitches on my hook. Then I make a yarn over and I draw the hook back through the first two stitches and I've got two stitches left on my hook. Then yarn over and turn the hook down and scoop back and draw it through and I've made one treble stitch and I've got one stitch left on my hook. So now I want to make one chain. Then I'm going to make a treble into the chain where the next marker is. So I make a yarn over, I put the hook from front to back where that marker is, take the marker out and then make a yarn over and pull the hook through back to the front and I've got three stitches on my hook. I can make a yarn over Scoop that hook back through the first two stitches and I've got two stitches left on my hook. Make a yarn over and scoop it back to one. Okay, so I make one chain. And then the next treble. So it's yarn over and then the hook goes through where the next marker stitch is. Then I can pull that marker out. Then I make a yarn over the hook, 
pull the hook back through to the front and I've got three stitches on my hook. Yarn over, pull back through the first two stitches and I've got two stitches left on my hook. Yarn over and pull back through to one stitch. Then again, I'm going to make a chain and then I'm going to make my treble where the next marker stitch is. So I'm going to make a yarn over, pop the hook through that chain where the marker is. Then I can take the marker out, yarn over and pull the hook through back to the front. And I've got three stitches on my hook. Then make a yarn over, scoop back to two stitches on my hook yarn over and scoop back to one stitch on my hook. So again, make another chain. Then I'm going to make my next treble. Yarn over, through the chain where the marker stitch is, pull that marker stitch out, yarn over and pull your hook back through to the front and you've got three stitches on your hook. Yarn over, scoop your hook back downwards through the first two stitches and you've got two stitches on your hook. Yarn over, turn the hook down and scoop it back through to one stitch. So again, one chain and then we're moving on to the next marker. So it's yarn over the hook through that chain space where the marker is then we can pull the marker out. I know the markers make it look a little bit messy, but it does save a lot of time trying to figure out where you need to make your next stitches. So it's yarn over the hook, pull the hook back through to the front, yarn over, scoop back through the first two stitches and we have two stitches on our hook. Yarn over and scoop back through to one. So now another chain and then my next treble, yarn over, through that stitch where the marker is, take my marker out and discard it, yarn over and draw my hook back through and I've got three stitches on my hook, yarn over, pull back to two, yarn over, pull back to one make one chain, yarn over, put my hook through where the next marker stitch is in the chain, pull that marker out, yarn over, pull the hook back through to the front and I've got three stitches on my hook, yarn over, scoop back through and I've got two stitches on my hook, yarn over, scoop back through again the last two stitches and I've got one stitch left on my hook. Make one chain and another treble. So yarn over through where the next marker is. We can pull our marker out, yarn over the hook, pull the hook back through to the front and we've got three stitches on our hook. Yarn over, scoop back through the first two stitches yarn over, scoop back through the last two, make one chain and then we're going to make our next treble. Yarn over from front to back through that chain, take our marker out, yarn over, pull the hook back through and we've got three stitches on our hook, yarn over, Scoop back through the first two, yarn over, scoop back through the last two. Then we're going to make one chain and we're ready to make our last treble where our last marker is. So it's yarn over the hook, through that chain, pull our marker out, yarn over the hook and pull back through to the front and we've got three stitches on our hook. Yarn over, scoop back through the first two, 
yarn over, scoop back through the last two. And that is our first row made. So if we take a look at it, we've got 11 trebles spaced along this row with one chain space in between. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 trebles and this is a chain space here at the side and then we've got 11 spaces so we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and eleven this one here so every row now we're going to have one chain space and one treble less so our next row will have 10 trebles and 10 spaces and the next row will have nine trebles and nine spaces and so on till we get to the point so to do this i'm going to turn my work and make sure that my yarn is at the back and then in this first chain space here this first gap i'm going to make a slip stitch so i just put the hook through the gap, yarn over the hook and pull the hook back through to two and then keep going all the way back to one. Okay, now we're going to make four chain, one, two, three, four. And then we're going to be working into the chain spaces. So I'm going to make a treble in the first chain space. So it's yarn over, hook through the gap through the chain space, yarn over the hook, pull back through, and I have three stitches on my hook. Then it's yarn over the hook and pull back through the first two stitches. And I have two stitches left on my hook yarn over the hook and pull back through the second two and then I'm going to make one chain then I'm going to work into the next chain space so it's yarn over the hook hook through the chain space yarn over the hook pull back through to the front and I've got three stitches on my hook yarn over the hook pull back through to two yarn over the hook Pull back to one. So I'll do this once more. I'm going to make one chain. Then I'm going to make a treble in the next chain space. And I'm going to continue working this way all the way along till I get to this very end chain space here. So I'll see you at the end of the row. So remember that we're working into this chain space here at the side. This is the very last one. So I'm making my final treble. And now if I take a look at what I've made, I have 10 trebles in this row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I've got 10 gaps, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So again, I'm going to turn my work and make sure my yarn is at the back. And in this row, I want to make sure that I have nine trebles and nine gaps. So I'm going to pop my hook through the first chain space and make a slip stitch. And this will cause the um, rows to just get slightly narrower each time. Now I can make four chain. One, two, three, four. And then in the next gap here, I'm going to make one treble. And one chain and then a treble in the next gap.
and I'm going to continue all the way along making one chain and then one treble in each gap. And I've just made one treble and one chain and I'm going to work my last treble into the gap here. And then turn my work, keeping my yarn to the back, making a slip stitch in that first gap. So yarn goes over the hook, pull it through and all the way through to one and make four chain. And I'm going to be working along this row, making one treble in the next gap. followed by one chain and one treble in the next gap and one chain and I'll continue this all the way till I get to the end. So I've just made a treble and I'm going to make one chain and then make my final treble in the last chain space. So now I have eight trebles in this row. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and eight chain spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So every row gets one chain space and one treble narrower. So we carry on in this manner, continuing until we just end up with two trebles and two chain spaces in our row. So just remember that we turn our work, we make a slip stitch, so that's yarn over the hook and all the way through to one. That's the first thing that we do. Then we make four chain, one, two, three, four. And then we work one treble in the next chain space, which is here. And then we're going to work all the way along the row, working one chain and one treble in each chain space. So I'm going to continue in this manner all the way now until we end up with just two chain spaces left in our row. So here we are, we've now just got two chain spaces in our last row and we have our two trebles. So I'm now going to make the point. So I'm going to turn my work for one final time and then quite simply I'm just going to make a slip stitch just like we've been doing before. So yarn over the hook and all the way through to one and this time we're just going to make two chain so that's one two and then we make one final treble in the last chain space so that's my final treble made and we're ready to cut our yarn and this is where I take a little bit of care and um, I'm careful how I do this. So I'm going to cut my yarn, leaving enough thread to darn in my end afterwards. And I'm going to put the yarn around the hook and flick it through. But as I do, I make sure that I pull the yarn away from the point. So I'm pulling the point gently away and that ensures that I get a nice point to my bunting. 
and then now with this thread that I have here I can get a darning needle and I basically I choose which side I want to have as my front and then I'll turn that over and along the back I carefully feed the thread up through the sides and then finish it off. So to do this I take my needle and I just pop the yarn up along just through the back of one of the treble stitches and then I'm just careful not to lose the point and then again I trail it along up through a few of the others. I don't go along this very edge stitch And then I lay it on a flat surface, ensuring I keep that point. And then I can just snip my ends. And again with the top one here. I just usually take that through the back of the chain. So I just thread it through. Lose the ends of the yarn in there. And that's it done. So that's it, our bunting is complete. All that's left to do is to make as many pieces as you want and thread some ribbon through the top of it. If you're keeping this just as a one piece only, you can of course turn it into a little pennant here and thread a rod or as I've done a fancy pencil and just tie some yarn to either end so that you can hang it up. Um, of course, don't forget in part one of this series, we made a flower. So that can always be sewn onto your bunting to embellish it further if you wish to. So well done on making your bunting and don't forget that the link to the free PDF pattern is in the description box below. So as you start to get more familiar with your crochet, you can also take a look at the crochet pattern as well. So the next video in this series is going to be making a small mat, working in the round and using the UK treble stitch. So for now, I'll just say thanks for joining me. Happy crocheting and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.